He said they didn't have to follow blocking and they didn't have to say the same lines. You say it's a death to the actor's gift to put their concentration on the effect they're having on the audience? Because they should have their concentration on their acting partner. Okay. So if I'm in a scene with you, let's say, and it's opening night, and I know my parents are in the audience and high school friends, <laughs> and I'm just, oh, I'm going to, sh- this, this is going to be great. But really, that's the kiss of death for the actor because I should be focusing on our scene, our argument, our whatever it is that's binding us up there. Well, that's the scene. The scene is the relationship. The scene is the relationship. Or relationships, if there's more, if the scene, there's more than two people in the scene. Um, yeah, that is the scene. It's the relationship and how it changes. The relationship starts out in one place and it ends up in another place, and and the the process of it, change of the relationship changing. That's the emotional event. That for and and it can be very subtle. It can be very small. That in the beginning they're friends, they're good friends, and at the end of the they've. And during the uh, and during the scene, they exchange intimacies, and at the end, they're closer friends than they were at the beginning. So that that's you know that could be that could be a scene or an, that could be an emotional event. Um, but it it has to happen in the moment, and the and the safest way for something to happen in the moment is 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 to be focused on the response of your partner. Now, that doesn't mean you have to always be in each other's eye line. You, you know, that one character might be making a sandwich and the other one is over there. So they, you might not, you don't have to always have the, the, the eye line, but, but you have to always have the awareness of the, uh, of, the other, of the other character, the other actor, even if it's a single, even if, the, even if it's a close-up on, uh, on, this, on this actor, that, that the other actor, even if they're out of frame, they're still in the scene. So they're still, they're still in the shot, even though if they're not physically in the shot. And that is the, the simplest way, the strongest way, the most effective way, the most reliable way for an actor not to be, not to start worrying about whether their parents are going to like it or not, is to, uh, or whether the director is going to like it or not, or whether... Uh, it, it, anything else is, is to is to be is to lose themselves in the other in the other actor, um, and you know and, and and connecting to the other actor is the thing that that um, awakens an actor to their own impulses. It sounds con- uh, like a, a counterintuitive, but it's true. So let's say we have actor A and actor B on stage. And actor A is very much about playing off of actor B and is dialed into them and has been able to lose the audience in some sense. They don't even realize they're there. But actor B is concerned with the audience and is concerned with their performance. And there's a disconnect. A can't connect to B because B is in its own performance. Yeah, well, the director has to speak to actor B. Uh, what if in that moment, some people might, you know, get it carried away and they run with it and that actor A can't have that director intervene? Suppose Are you it's talking a about a theater piece? Could be a theater piece, yeah. So how would well, actor uh, uh, Yeah, oh, sorry. But no, the no, director no. has much less control than a theater piece. <laughs> so, sure. so that's a completely different thing anyway because they're... You know, once they open, they start making their, you know, they start changing things. So, I mean, I did it myself when I was in theater. You start, well, yeah. you, you start throwing out direction left and right. But, but if for, for film, and most of my people who, who uh, most of my readers, my book, uh, Directing Actors, 25th Anniversary Edition, are film directors or television. And, um, so you ha- and the director has a tremendous amount of control. Uh, over over things, so certainly over whether to do another take or not. But we still hear about. Oh, sorry, we, we do still hear about an actor upstaging another actor and kind of running with it. Should actor A, who's trying to stay more true to the scene, play off that 
in some should they bring that to the performance okay. if b is running wild and and is unharnessed and is like wait a minute you're changing all the rules here should a then say okay i guess there's new rules here and i have to go <laughs> well that's that's a tough one that did happen to me when i was doing theater back in the 70s i was doing this play it was a pretty strange play and uh, and one and it was like five people on five or six people on stage at once and sitting together five or six act, female uh, characters on stage at once and we were we were blocked so that we were sitting in a circle and then there was one actor there who had the fewest lines and and she was playing an old lady and so she she decided to pretend that you know she had dentures and that her dentures were loose and so she was doing this kind of thing through the whole play. And my character was my character was also a little bit of a crazy person. And but I kept my craziness, you know, within the bounds of the direction I'd been given and and the uh, you know, and, and giving making sure that the actors who were supposed to have focus had focus when they were when they were supposed to have it. And but but this one lady was throwing everything off. And uh I toyed with the idea of picking up on her energy and being as crazy as her in order to feel like I was still in the play, but I decided not to. So, uh, but there were, I had some friends who came who said, you know, she's actually very funny. She's actually the best thing in the play. <laughs> and so you should match her energy and, and, uh, and, and go, uh, and go ahead. So I don't know. It, it's, uh, but you know, it, it's, the director was also in the play, so she was there every night, and um, I wanted to work with her again, so I didn't think she would like it, so I didn't do it. But does that answer your question? Is that what you meant? Yeah, it does. I mean, I'm thinking, actually, uh, was it Robert Altman's uh, Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean? Oh, right. So you have Karen Black, you have Cher, you have all these different people, and they're all their own star of the show, but in different ways, and they don't really seem to be outshining one another. They, they're, they're contained within their parts, but when their part is up, they're brilliant kind of thing. But not everybody works, I'm sure, who knows how it was behind the scenes, but for the audience, you see this thing where no one's trying to step over one another. Right, well, Waltman was famous for his ensembles you know that that and he when you're asking how does the director set the tone and and he always made sure that every everything was an ensemble piece so that and 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 everybody was going to get their turn ah everybody was going to get their turn and and it, you know he promoted and created an all for one and one for all atmosphere on the set by giving huge amounts, huge amounts of permission. I, one of my students was in um, uh, the player, I think, and, and uh, had a small part in, in one scene. And, and she told me afterwards that he said he wanted them to do it differently on every take. He wow. said they didn't have to follow blocking and they didn't have to say the same lines. And uh, they can do whatever they could follow any impulse and i mean it's a brilliant movie right, right. so right. so uh, that was his way of doing it and and um and he knew everything about blocking he could block really really well you know the player that opening scene it's blocked within an inch of its life you know in order to have that four minute take everybody has to hit their marks at exactly the right time so he knew how to block a scene perfectly but he, he could see if it was there or not. And he would let the act, I don't know, but that's him. I, I never tell my clients or my students that they should do that, that you know, try to be Robert Altman. He, he, was, he was a genius. And, um, but I think he'd let people know, you're gonna get your turn. You're, you, can, uh, you can trust me. He, they, I mean, actors trusted Altman. Or completely. I think that, that you said the magic word. Yeah, get your or words, get your turn. Yeah. And so you feel like you don't need to, you know, 
mess with the dentures, so to speak, even though you said that your <laughs> friend said that it worked. But but I could see that happening where maybe it could take some people out of the play and they felt yeah. distracted or who, who knows, I wasn't there. But but yeah. I like that. The, but the, you know, if, if it's a movie, of course, you, you could just not use any close-ups of that of that character it's it's very easily fixed in the editing room just don't use the don't use the shots that she's in right. if you think she's gone too far